Hello, I am Zarkoon, this is World of Warships Legends. Today, I've got a game for you on Crash Zone, Domination Mode, in the Gross Occur First. And this ship will not be played by me today, but instead by the Monk 52, a name that you're probably familiar with, particularly if you caught my stream this most recent Friday. The Monk joined me in a division for that stream, in this game, he is in a division with Doremo and Solisto, two names that you might also be familiar with. This game, though, all about the monk in the GK, and this is a very well-played Gross Occur First game. The results that monk achieves by the end, I think, are better in terms of overall damage done than the results I have yet achieved in this ship. So it's a very excellent game. And the monk plays it according to his own advice. If you are not familiar with the monk's channel, I did leave a link to a video of his in the description. The title is Gross Occur First Masterclass. I believe he's done two videos covering this ship and giving his advice on how to play it. It is advice that I agree with, and the monk does a good example of demonstrating it here. So let's see if I can elucidate some of that advice for you. I have in the past many times, or at least I think I have, maybe I haven't done it explicitly, but I've recommended playing this ship at longer ranges, especially in the beginning of a match. That is pretty much the quintessential philosophy that applies to all German battleships. It is true that the German battleships are heavily armored. They, in fact, have the turtleback armor scheme, which means in close-up duels, battleship to battleship, if, say, the GK is broadside to a Yamato, and the Yamato is broadside to the GK, and they're trading shots, despite the fact that the Yamato has bigger guns and a higher alpha strike, the Yamato is going to have a hard time penetrating the citadel of the Grossa Kerfurst, even if it is flat broadside because of that turtleback armor scheme. Conversely, in a straight-up trade, the Gross Occur First is going to have a much easier time penetrating the citadel of any battleship that isn't German. And that ability to penetrate the citadel with its large 16-inch guns, and I do think in this case the Monk is using the 420 millimeter guns, which are glorified 16-inch guns, not quite as big as the Yamato's 18-inch guns. Either way, with its 12 16-inch guns, the Grossa Kerfurst is going to have an easy time penetrating the citadel of pretty much any battleship that isn't the Grossa Kerfurst, because almost all of them do not have a turtleback armor scheme that is quite effective, or that is quite as effective as the GK's in preventing critical and catastrophic damage. Thus, in the beginning of matches, you really want to evaluate what the enemy team is doing. And here, we notice on the map that the friendlies have flipped both the Charlie and Bravo caps for the blue team. The enemies, on the other hand, hold exactly no caps and it looks like the vast majority of the enemy team is pushing toward the Alpha Cap with a couple ships left out here and there. It looks like there are two ships on the red team to the east of the Charlie Cap, and then pretty much the rest of the enemy team is making a lemming train sort of push toward Alpha, which in my opinion, is probably not the most effective use of their fleet, and we'll see that play out here, although this is going to be a pretty close game. In any case, the monk has adopted this island to the port side of his ship as cover, 
and that's another thing that I have advised doing in the Gross Occur First. Islands, of course, can be your friends in battleships. You see cruisers using them all the time as both cover and concealment, as sort of a staging ground to send shots toward the enemy battleships from the safety of concealment and cover. Islands hide your ship from the enemies, and they also work as free and indestructible armor. And they can limit the amount of ships that shoot at you. So because of Monk's positioning here, he does have a number of ships who, sh who could shoot at him. But for now, that GK directly in front of him, right in the sights of his guns, is the only one who really has any shots on him, and because he's angled at him, it wouldn't be a very dangerous thing. Now, there is the Atatago out there, who did take a pot shot at him, did hit him, but didn't do too much damage and started no fires. The monk is still very healthy at 77, okay, 76,000 hit points, and he's done 93,000 damage so far in a very passive manner. That's because the Grosse Kurfürst and the German battleships are a lot about the proper timing. What you want to do, I think, is sort of what the monk is doing here, which is dealing damage as effectively as he can with the most minimal risk to his own ship. He's letting the enemy move into position. He's letting them commit to trying to enter the alpha cap, which... Honestly, they should have done a long time ago because it's already been flipped by the blue team. And the onus is definitely on the enemy to start making some stuff happen here. The ship count is even, but the points count shows that the blue team has a pretty commanding lead right now. And that lead is only going to continue to grow if none of these cap circles are contested by the Reds. So it seems that the monk is hanging back now and deciding what he should do. What you can do when you notice that the enemy team is all clustered together in a certain sector of the map is evaluate the island cover on the map and see if you can spot a route that you can take to get yourself closer to the enemy where you will be more effective, but also more in danger. That is why the islands are good in order to shield you from being shot at by too many ships and to allow you to get closer to enemy ships without necessarily being spotted and without necessarily being shot at. In any case... What you definitely don't want to do is charge headfirst into the entire enemy team. It's something I see a lot of GKs doing, and something I see a lot of German battleships doing. Your turtleback armor doesn't make you indestructible, and in fact, the GK and other German battleships can get hit in their superstructure and in other parts of their ship for tremendous AP shell chip damage. And that's nothing to say of their superstructure, which is massive and is incredibly vulnerable to high explosive spam, not only for, you know, fires that get lit on these ships and deal damage that way, but also just for the lightly armored superstructure itself, which eats a lot of HE penetration damage. If you're focused by a number of enemy ships, your hit points are going to go down rapidly, you're going to find yourself dying, and hopefully you're going to learn that the turtleback armor doesn't in fact make you invincible, but that it's just a tool that allows you to have an advantage when trading salvos between yourself and other battleships. And to make the most effective trades, you need to preserve your hit points for as long as possible. That's what the monk has done here. And this shot on the Alaska is going to sort of, I guess, signal the time that 
Monk is going to take to push. You'll notice that because the enemy team did form a cluster, we'll call it a lemming train, and Monk's team was more spread out, the ship count is now very different. In fact, the enemy ships have the majority of boats on their side. Looks like there are six of them. All right, now five versus four friendly ships. Monk, with that devastating strike and his first kill of the match, has brought the ship count down to a little bit more manageable levels. Now, he did take shots in the front of his ship from some enemy out there, but he is keeping track of the enemy Otago and the enemy GK's progress. He notices a broadside GK in front of him at about 18 kilometers. He's going into reverse, and he's angled well against the GK, who still does manage to take 5,000 hit points off of him. In the grand scheme of things, of course, that's not anything too bad to worry about. Takes a shot at that GK before he disappears. Doesn't look like that shot is going to hit. A broadside Yamato is heading in the direction that the monk's ship is pointing. And an enemy GK is about to appear around that island. Looks like he's out of effective firing range. So he probably won't have shots on the monk's broadside. But now, I think, may be the opportune moment for the monk to move forward, particularly since the enemy ship directly in front of him has gone down to a friendly torpedo salvo. That, as far as we know, just leaves that enemy GK right there on very low health, and the enemy Yamato, who was pushing forward, and I think is not aware that the monk is necessarily here. Now, you can take a look at the monk's hit points. Okay, I guess the enemy Yamato is aware, since the monk just took a shot. He's at a little bit... pretty close to half health right now. He is going to be able to take out this GK, hopefully, with his front guns. Yes, there goes the GK. Second kill of the match, and 165,000 damage done. And now, that's just going to leave him, basically, as the only ship apart from the friendly destroyer, to deal with the last three remaining enemies. Now, his team still commands a very nice points lead over the enemy, which means there's no reason for the monk to do anything too risky. Luckily, he doesn't have to. The enemy Yamato decides to make it as easy as possible and give flat broadside. There was a citadel. Now the rear guns have shots in the air another citadel, and that Yamato goes down. The monk is giving it a fair amount of broadside, but the enemy Yamato's last dying shots are relatively ineffective. Even the most effective shot probably wouldn't have hit the monk's citadel, and that trade still would have resulted in the monk's victory in terms of a duel between him and the Yamato. The Otago, on the other hand, is a torpedo threat. The GK isn't Extremely maneuverable, although it does have a one-minute duration sonar. That, unfortunately, is on cooldown at the moment. I think that was responsible for spotting the Otago's first set of torpedoes, but the Otago does have more, and it looks like the Otago is going to... or he has already launched them. There they are. The monk is turned away from them. Looks like it would be very easy for him to dodge them all, and he does. And as long as he takes out this Otago, that's going to put his team over a thousand points and win them the match. So, here we pretty much are going to end the game with this shot on the Otago. The secondaries nearly take him out, but it's the main guns that finish him off. Ending the game with 237,000 damage done and four kills. Nearly a Kraken Unleashed. In fact, there are a few more seconds left in the match, but Monk is not, regrettably, going to be able to conceal that Kraken before it ends. Still, an example of excellent playing in the Grossa Kerr first. You can check out the Monk 
and listen to what he has to say in his own words by following the link to his video in the description. If you like what he's done, consider subscribing to his channel, and consider subscribing to mine, and leaving a like if you like what you saw here. If you want to send me a community replay, consider joining my Discord server. I have a channel in there where you can send me a community replay, and you can find a link to that in the description as well. But for now, I think that's it. So, I will see you next time. Goodbye.